When the piggy bank or mattress method of money storage are no longer options, most of us opt for either a bank or a credit union as a means of holding our cash. But what's the difference between the two? And which one might be the best fit for you? Hey y'all, welcome back, I'm Nikita. Look, before we get started, please don't actually store your money in a mattress. With savings rates being so good right now, taking advantage of those rates by storing your money in a savings account, it's probably the better move. All right, now that that's out of the way, Banks and credit unions, let's talk about them. These are the two main types of financial institutions that hold everyday cash and provide standard banking services. Both have a license to hold and lend money so you can get your checking and savings accounts, your credit cards, your loans, and more through either option. But the similarities mostly end there. Let's start with banks since they've been around in the US a lot longer than credit unions, with the first bank opening in Philly in 1791. And at the most basic level, banks are businesses. Banks use the money that you put into your checking or savings accounts to make loans for other individuals or businesses behind the scenes. I know that when I say it like that, it probably sounds kind of sketchy, but it's really not. Banks make their money off interest from the loans that they've dispersed, and you'd get a portion back in the form of interest on your savings or checking accounts. To legally operate, banks must have either a license or a state or national charter and are overseen by a banking regulator. Basically, that's just a lot of fancy words, meaning that the bank has to play nice and stay in compliance with relevant regulations. And if you're still in panic mode, like, but it's my money, what if something happens and the bank can't give it back? Relax, you're likely okay. Most banks are federally insured, which means the federal government insures eligible account funds up to 250K for principal and interest if your bank goes belly up. If you've ever heard the term FDIC insured, that's referencing this bank federal insurance. So when I started talking about banks, the first thing that probably came to your mind are the national banks like your Wells Fargo or your Chase and more of the biggest banking names in the country. Some of the big banks even have international divisions. National banks usually have large networks of branches and ATMs across the country and typically offer a large selection of products and services to not just the general public, but to businesses and commercial clients as well. But there are smaller scale banks too. Banks are usually categorized by their size and whether they have physical branches. There are regional banks that focus on specific areas in the country, small local community banks, and even online only banks. There are also neobanks, which aren't technically banks on their own, but instead partner with FDIC insured banks to offer their customers checking and cash management accounts. In addition to the fact that they typically have more ATMs and locations across a region or the country, there are other perks of banks as well. Banks generally have a large selection of services and products that they offer to their members besides the standard checking and savings accounts like taxable brokerage accounts, money market accounts, and small business loans. Working with a bank in many cases can mean having a one-stop shop for all of your financial needs. Banks also tend to adopt new technology quicker, offering members various online banking features and tech-driven in-branch experiences. I know I mentioned a ton of bank perks, but I also said earlier that banks are businesses. So I wanna to touch on that a little bit more because that does bring some downsides. Banks are typically owned in part by investors who play a huge role in how banks are run. In many cases, this means higher rates on loans and lower interest rates on other accounts, such as certificates of deposits. This also can mean being charged more fees like maintenance fees, overdraft fees, and more. All right. Maybe the wheels in your head are turning now about the business of banking, or maybe you're scouring your bank's website for a list of their fees. Either way, I think it feels like a good time to shift over to credit unions, right? Where banks are for-profit enterprises, credit unions are not-for-profit cooperatives. Credit unions are not owned by investors and instead are owned by their members. The primary focus of a credit union is to help members financially succeed. They have a vote amongst members to elect a volunteer board of directors who help drive the direction of the credit union. Credit unions offer many of the same services as banks, but unlike banks, a credit union's profit is returned to the members in the form of interest and other benefits. Those benefits might be educational programs, low fees, and better rates on loans and savings. Your money is just as safe in a federally chartered credit union as it is with most banks, but instead of being FDIC insured, Credit unions are insured by the National Credit Union Administration, or NCUA. Credit unions typically have their own branches and ATMs, with most being community or regional locations. 
Many credit unions are part of the Co-op Solutions shared branch network, allowing members to complete basic financial transactions at partner credit unions and ATMs around the country. The Co-op network has over 30,000 ATMs and over 5,600 branches around the country. There are a few barriers with credit unions to keep in mind though. For starters, many credit unions have a membership fee to get started, sometimes as low as $5 and other times more. In addition to the potential membership fee to open an account, some credit unions also have membership requirements to join. The specific requirements will vary from credit union to credit union, but generally speaking, credit unions are designed for the members within a specific community. So maybe that's a credit union dedicated to places of worship, residents of a certain town, or service members in the military or other professions. You might need to meet the basic membership requirements to become an approved member of a credit union. Due to the smaller size of most credit unions, they typically don't offer the full range of services that you might expect from a bigger bank. Things like small business loans or brokerage accounts. You may also find that the mobile technology for your local credit union lacks some of the bells and whistles of bigger banks. Instead, maybe you'll find better interest rates on loans and certificates of deposits, plus less or lower fees for maintenance, overdraft, and out-of-network ATM use. So which is better, a bank or a credit union? It depends on what matters the most to you from your financial institution. Banks typically offer more branches in the region or across the country with more ATMs as well. Banks also have more diverse offerings, allowing members to invest, get loans, access small business resources, and save all in one space. So if you travel a lot, you have the need to stop into a branch regularly throughout the country, or you want more of a one-stop shop financial experience, a bank might be the best choice. If the potential of slightly better interest rates matters to you, a community credit union may be the way to go for you. This is especially true if you plan to buy a home or a car soon. Car loan interest rates and mortgage rates on average tend to be a bit better at credit unions. A credit union may also be the best move if you like the idea of being part of a community financial institution, helping to support others in your niche reach their financial goals. It's worth noting that the increase in online only banks makes some of the decisions a bit more complicated. Online banks are able to offer more competitive rates than some of their traditional brick and mortar counterparts. That makes them a viable contender if you don't need the ability to walk into a physical branch. Ultimately, when you're deciding where to put your money, consider these five factors. One, what fees does the institution charge and how much are they? Check costs for overdraft and maintenance fees as well as out of network ATM fees or monthly minimum requirements. Two, how many branches or locations does the institution have? If in-person service is important to you, consider local bank or credit union options, but you'll need to know the options for accessing your cash when you're out of town. Three, what services are offered? Are you looking for a wide range of features or do you just need the basics? Four, what are the interest rates? If you're going to park your money in an account, I might as well be doing some work while it's there. Some institutions offer significantly better APY rates than others. Five, make sure the bank is insured. I mentioned earlier about FDIC insurance for banks and NCUA for credit unions. Any brick and mortar or online bank or credit union you're considering should be insured with one of these agencies. Okay, I wanna wrap this up with a quick story. It'll be fast, I promise. I joined a credit union when I got my first paycheck at age 15 and have had the same account since. They merged with another credit union recently and I started noticing on my bank accounts that my interest rates for savings changed and the new credit union was charging me $3 for out of network ATM use. Y'all already know what I did. <laughs> I found a new financial institution that had triple the APY and no fees. The moral being A, pay attention to your bank statements and B, what worked for you a few years ago in a financial institution might not work as well for you today. Look, is researching a new financial institution hard? No, there are a ton of nerd wallet resources to help you out. Is it super annoying to have to change your billing info at all the companies that you have automatic payments set up with? 100%, but it's worth it if you consider the improved experience and financial savings. And let's be real y'all, it's rare for a bank or credit union to have any sort of loyalty perks for sticking around for their checking or savings accounts. So don't be afraid to jump ship if you're not getting what you want out of the relationship. Thanks for watching this episode in our Versus series. If you learned something, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you want more clarity on banks, be sure to check out our Neobanks versus Traditional Banks video for a lot more great information. Bye.